David is one of my favorite people because God uses David uh, to do great exploits in the Bible. David is a mighty man. David is a king. David is a champion. David is a hero. And those of us who look into the life of David can find great encouragement and instruction through how God uses him. David is incredible. He is a warrior and a worshiper. David has the ability to call upon the presence of God through worship and then come out of that presence of God and beat down his enemies. I like him because he can go from being a warrior to a worshiper in no time. The real warriors are the real worshipers. The ones that have the ability to come into the presence of God and have God touch them then have the power to go out from that presence and do great exploits in the world and tear down the strongholds of the enemy and do great things for God and so David paints us a prophetic picture of what God is doing in this generation I believe that in this generation God is raising up worshipers who will go out of the gates and become the warriors that change the world and change their lives and change this generation if you believe it shout amen David comes to our text this morning and he has decided to bring the ark of God out of Benjamin and into Judah out of the land of Benjamin and into Judah. Now those of you who are Bible scholars, you understand that Benjamin means my right hand. It means son of my right hand. And he's moving it from Benjamin from the right hand, which represents the arm of the flesh. He's moving the ark, the presence of God, from Benjamin into Judah. Those of you who are Bible scholars, of course you understand that Judah means means praise he is moving the presence of God from the arm of the flesh into praise and when the strength moves from our strength into praise when we move the presence of God from what we can do and what we can make happen and we say God I'm moving your presence from where I am and what I can do into a place where you do whatever you want to do when we move it from the arm of the flesh into a place of praise then we begin to see the power of God move in a dimension we have never seen before the weakness of the church is that we do everything in our own strength. Our thoughts, our creations, our schemes, our masterful leadership tactics. When we move out from what man can do and we say God we give you permission to do whatever you want to do when we say God it's no longer my agenda for my life it's no longer my plan for my life it's what you want to do it's how you want to lead me I'm submitting my life I am worshiping you I am kissing toward you I'm going to be a praiser I'm going to be a radical person who in, mm, who pulls forth the presence of God into my existence then we begin to see the power of God move in the dimension that we've never seen before and David decides I'm going to bring the ark of the Lord to my city will you touch your neighbor say neighbor I'm gonna bring it to my city turn to your other neighbor say other neighbor say I'm not just gonna have planet shakers here Say, I'm going to bring it to my city. If you're going to do that, give God a praise right there. David says, I'm going to bring the presence of God, the ark of God, to my city. He says, I'm not just going to leave it over there. I'm not just going to visit it when I feel like it. I want the presence of God to be in my city. I want God to show up in my city. I want a miracle in my house. If you believe it, show yeah. See, it 
it's not just good enough for you to have a Holy Ghost eruption here in Adelaide. You got to have a Holy Ghost eruption in Victoria. You got to have a Holy Ghost eruption in Perth. You got to have it in West. You got to have it all over this nation. When we begin to shake our cities, we begin to shake our nation. When we shake our city and our nation, we shake our planet. If you believe it, shout yeah. I feel like preaching now. I want you to understand something. Hey. I want you to understand something. David is not satisfied with the presence of God being outside of his land. David is not satisfied with visiting a move of God. I don't want a visitation. I want a habitation. I want God to live where I live. I need God to move where I move. When I go to the supermarket, I want to feel God. When I drive in my car, I need to feel God. When I'm in my bedroom, I want to be able to lift up holy hands and feel the presence and the reign and the power and the purpose of God reign and rule in my environment I don't let the atmosphere tell me what to do I tell the atmosphere what to do I don't tell the situation tell me what to do I tell the situation that I have a revelation from God that is bigger than my condition and it's bigger than my position because I'm a child of God David says I'm bringing the ark of God into my city and so he decides to go get the ark whenever you prioritize God the devil is always going to try to mess it up you have to decide that I need the presence of God you have to decide that I need a visitation of the Holy Ghost. You have to decide that I'm not going to let anything hinder me from going after God. David decides that he's going to bring it from Benjamin into Judah and something goes wrong. Uzzah. Somebody say Uzzah. Uzzah touches the ark and he touches the anointing and he drops there and dies. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, God. Anybody who messes with me, don't touch the anointing. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. That's why we have to learn how to honor leadership. Don't just touch him. Shut up. <laughs> I love it. God protects those that praise him. God covers them that cherish him. God surrounds them that celebrate him. God loves those who love his presence, his power, his purpose in the earth. Don't you walk around scared anymore. Walk around like you're a champion. Walk around not like you're a loser. Walk around like you're a winner. Don't walk around here like you're some mm, bent over, bowed, buckled. You need to stand up like those three Hebrew boys and say, for God I live and for God I die and I have more than I need to overcome you, O king. When you get there, You'll see God do things like you've never believed before. When you get there, you'll see God begin to shake this nation with his power. There won't be a stadium big enough to hold you. There won't be a church big enough to hold you. The power of God will rain down on your city in such a way. I come from a church that is seven years old and has 36,000 members. Oh, you don't have to praise God. The size of your town 
many of you, is the size of our church in seven years. 1,500 people joined the first Sunday. 800 members join every single month. God is doing it. Our youth group is the size of this conference. Yeah. Why? Because I'm so special? No. Because I'm so intelligent? No. Because I know what I'm doing? No. Because God put his anointing on a donkey. And every Sunday we get up and say, Hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. decide that I may not have everything I need but I got God and he's more than enough when you decide I'm gonna when you decide that you're gonna let God use you just as you are with all your problems and failures and weirdness hallelujah and dysfunction and craziness and you just decide I'm gonna bring the anointing into my life you will find out that even though you thought you were just a shepherd boy you were really a king all along